let's turn to another targeted population, those with an ALK rearrangement. There was a very recent approval of a drug, seritinib, or Zycadia, and there was a presentation of the dose expansion to what is now the FDA-approved dose of 750 milligrams by Dr. Kim. Nasser, can you tell us some of the highlights of that, and does that help us frame our use of Zycadia in this population? Well, I think it reinforces what we already knew. So we had already seen a previous publication of, uh, of seritinib in a different patient population. And this was in an Asian pa patient population that was presented at ASCO this year. And this is a next generation ALK inhibitor. This uh, was evaluated in patients with an ALK gene rearrangement, both in those patients who had previously received an ALK inhibitor as well as those patients who had never received an ALK inhibitor. So the, the ALK naive patients and also the ALK resistant patient population. And the data duplicated the prior trial, almost identical numbers. And that is that about 60% of patients had an objective response. And the waterfall plots were almost superimposable from the other study. Um, and it, it was interesting in that the response rate was similar whether you had had a previous ALK inhibitor or, or you hadn't. Um, there are other ALK inhibitors uh, that uh, we did not hear about at this meeting, but we've previously heard about that were uh, even apparently more active in the ALK naive uh, patient population, but about 60% of patients. And so right now, seritinib is approved in the United States for patients with ALK gene rearrangements who've previously been treated with crizotinib and acquired resistance and had disease progression. I don't think this changes anything, but it's nice to have another data set that reinforces what we see. I was struck, you, you mentioned that the waterfall plot was identical. The waterfall plots are um, a, a, a diagram that shows that each line on the, on the waterfall plot represents a patient. If the line goes up, it means the tumor grew. If the line goes down, it means that the tumor shrank in that particular patient. And so in general, the idea is to have more lines going down than going up. But boy, those waterfall plots um, are amazing compared to what we have used, what we have seen in the past and what we have been impressed with in the past. It, right. You know, it's a really cool thing. Wanted to touch on a couple of things with seritinib, Zycadia. One is the dose was 750 milligrams and nearly two thirds of the patients had a dose reduction. And you'd mentioned that it does cause some GI toxicity. <laughs> you can get some elevated transaminases, which are blood tests that measure liver, uh, maybe some liver, mild liver injury. It can uh, probably cause a little bit of irritation of the pancreas because the lipase bumps in some patients. Some patients get a little diarrhea, a little nausea. So uh, these drugs do have side effects, and if you give a high enough dose, they cause side effects. So uh, we see that with crizotinib as well. I think the main issue is that this drug also seems to work at lower doses, so it is something that people should be, both the, the docs who are prescribing and the patient should know dose reduction could be a very effective mechanism rather than being scared off from the drug and putting it away for good, mm -hmm. that uh, 600 milligrams or even 450 milligrams, in, in other words, three or four instead of five tablets a day, could be a much better balance of side effects and utility. Completely agree, and, and the same is true with a drug like a Tarceva in patients with EGFR mutations. Yes. We, we see robust activity in lower doses. If We start out at the higher dose because that's uh, what is the FDA approved dose, but uh, I think none of us are, are, are afraid to go down if patients are having difficulty. And I, I think our threshold will be even lower with, with uh, Zycadia just because of it is tough, I think, at the full dose. But uh, it's approved for crizotinib, for Zalcori-resistant patients. They showed data with both Zalcori-naive and resistant patients. And uh, there was a longer progression-free survival if you hadn't gotten Zalcori-Provor. Does that change anything for you? Are you 
very tempted to use it in the frontline setting instead of Zalcori or reserve it for later? You know, we don't know the sequencing of these things. Patients are going to get both. Uh, we can look at uh, information from our uh, uh, from patients with renal cancer in which there are multiple TKIs, uh, sinitinib, exitinib, serafinib, pazopinib, and we've looked at sequencing of those and whether you can get responses with one if you've previously treated with another. And, uh, you know, in that group of patients with that TKI class, it seems that you can get responses back and forth. Uh, I think at this point we'll stick by the books and patients will get crizotinib uh, or Zalcori first line and then they'll get Zycadia second line until we have evidence otherwise. And there's th at least three other ALK inhibitors coming down the pike um, and so I think they're all jockeying for position right. um, uh, in some, to some degree and, and uh, some of the data that will be reported in the future may help us sequence them better. I do think you know, that Xalcori as more of the serendipitous ALK inhibitor yeah. is, is great as a first line if it works, but I am not very hopeful that it's going to work for Zycadia resistant disease right. because right. Zycadia is 20 times more potent for ALK. Yeah, no, you bring up a, a really good point. Serendipity with ALK, that's a, that's a good point with Zalcori because it's really, it really was not initially in, in thought of developed ALK. developed it for yeah. that. And the other thing about Cycadia, I guess, that Dr. Kim presented is its uh, responses in the brain that also distinguishes it from Zalcor. Yes, that's important to, to, so, to note because that, that is... That is a that's vexing a, thing. That's a vulnerability with the Zalcori that yeah. uh, patients time and time again will have progression because the drug just does not seem to penetrate into the central nervous system the way that several of the second generation ALK inhibitors do.